I recently did a video about a woman named Tiffany Guillory, who was a principal at a high school down in Texas, who they re they relieved her of her principal duties due to a quote unquote personnel matter. But they never went into detail about what that personnel matter was. But so I, what I did was I was like just going back through the comments just to see what everybody does, because something I typically do is I wait for a couple of days after a video has been posted to go back and see what people have said. And one of the comments that I recently saw posted was someone saying, Torian, please do a video about Denise George, because she's another person who fell into the same kind of category as this woman that you're talking about. This woman being Tiffany Guillory. But shout out to the person who actually told me that they didn't go into detail about what I would find when I typed her name into Google. But I think it's definitely worth talking about it because it's in relation to a person that all of us have heard about over the course of a couple of years up until the time of their uh, demise. So this woman's name is Denise George, and she is an attorney out of the Virgin Islands. And she was working closely with the case involving Jeffrey Epstein. Now, this woman actually sued JP Morgan Chase for millions, actually hundreds of millions of over a hundred million dollars, I believe. But the article is going to tell you that um, more detail when I get into it. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this woman ended up losing her job days after she sued them. And I think it's because she was successful or was going to be successful with the lawsuit. So they had to get her out, out of there. Now, keep in mind, the last time we heard about J.P. Morgan Chase was when they were dealing with Kanye West and getting all of his money out of their banks. And let's not also forget J.P. Morgan Chase, if you want to do a deep dive history, had a hand in slavery. So let's get into it. The Virgin Islands top prosecutor who reached a more than one hundred five million dollar settlement with Jeffrey Epstein's estate lost her job days after suing J.P. Morgan Chase in connection with her probe. The federal lawsuit filed in New York accused the bank of having, quote unquote, facilitated, sustained and concealed Epstein's human trafficking network. On December 27th, then Virgin Islands Attorney General Denise George filed a blistering and heavily redacted 30 page lawsuit against J.P. Morgan Chase. Now, the irony of that is that around that same time was the, around the same time that that story about Tiffany Guillory came out. J.P. Morgan turned a blind eye to evidence of human trafficking over more than a decade because of Epstein's own financial footprint and because of the deals and clients that Epstein brought and promised to bring to the bank, the lawsuit alleged. These decisions were advocated and approved at the senior levels of J.P. Morgan, including by the former chief executive of its asset management division and investment bank, whose inappropriate relationship with Epstein should have been evident to the bank. Indeed, it was only after Epstein's death that J.P. Morgan belatedly complied with federal banking regulations regarding Epstein's accounts. Epstein victims who sued anonymously in a pair of class action complaints previously had accused J.P. Morgan Chase and Deutsche Bank of complicity in the sex trafficking scheme. Though Epstein died in jail before his trial, his co-conspirator Ghislaine Maxwell was tried, convicted and sentenced to 20 years in prison. Days after the attorney general's filing of the lawsuit on New Year's Eve, George was removed from her post. Local news outlets in the Virgin Islands reported that the attorney general had not informed the territory's governor, Albert Bryan, about her impending enforcement action. George's office did not immediately respond to long crime email requests and comment on Monday, a federally observed holiday. The development was first reported by the Virgin Islands Consortium citing anonymous sources. Brian subsequently confirmed George's termination without providing an explanation for it. Now, doesn't that sound exactly what happened with Tiffany Guillory? They got rid of her because of a quote unquote personnel matter, but they didn't go into details what the personnel matter was. They just put it out there. That's what it was. Just like it was with that other woman who was the town manager for like a month and all the cops quit on her because they didn't want to work with her, but they kind of they claim that she was difficult to work with, but really, let's be real and honest with ourselves here. They quit because it was a black woman. They didn't want to work under her. And she was most likely coming in to clean house, much like what it sounds like this, like Tiffany Guillory was doing at that school. And it sounds like what this woman was doing here with this case. 
And then on top of that, she went after a huge, well-known global bank. And it seems she was on the right track. I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to try to uh, distort her name. It says, uh, in a statement sent to multiple news outlets, I re- I relieved Denise George of her duties as attorney general this week. Brian wrote in a statement sent to law and crime. I thank her for her service to the people of the territory during the past four years as attorney general and wish her the best in her future endeavors. Again, they don't tell you why they did it, but we can put two and two together and pretty much figure out for ourselves why they did what they did. The governor's spokesman declined to elaborate, telling law and crime, I am not at liberty to discuss details on personnel matters. Brian reportedly appointed Assistant Attorney General Carol Thomas Jacobs to serve as acting attorney general. Thomas Jacobs, who also did it, did not immediately respond to law and crime's press inquiry, also worked on Epstein's investigations, according to court documents. George had led the office when Thomas Jacobs signed her name to a complaint. Suing Epstein's estate under the Territory Criminally Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. Enforcement action, the local equivalent of a racketeering lawsuit. That action accused the estate's executors, Darren K. Indyke and Richard D. Kahn, of acting as Epstein's quote-unquote indispensable captains. Both denied those allegations and did not concede wrongdoing under the recent settlement, which called upon the estate to keep providing documents for the Attorney General's ongoing investigation. The case that George filed against J.P. Morgan Chase before her departure has been marked as related to the proposed class action lawsuits filed in the same court against J.P. Morgan Chase and Deutsche Bank currently pending before senior U.S. District Judge Jed Rakoff or Rakoff. Those now consolidated cases have been scheduled for trial in the Southern District of New York in the summer of 2023. Interesting interesting like i said this woman she got way too far on them and if she got any further she would have probably been successful and it's crazy how even still now to this day when it comes to epstein they are still doing their best to keep as much hush hush as they possibly can even going to the lengths of well let's be honest with ourselves that man in our honest opinion those who have common sense don't feel that this man took himself out He had a little bit of help. And they probably was hoping that everything was going to simply die with him. But it seems to just keep on going because more and more stuff keeps coming out. And I think the one of the main reasons they threw Ghislaine Maxwell in jail was to keep her quiet or to not have her uh, be on the outside because she knew too much because she was, you know, working right. She was like his right hand woman. She knew a lot. She probably saw a lot, too. I wouldn't be surprised if she engaged, too. But, yeah, they got rid of her because she was getting way too far ahead in what they call it getting uh, being in over your head. That's how it would apply with her. And then on top of that, she was taking on J.P. Morgan Chase and seemingly was beating them at their own little game and playing it a little bit better. So to keep her from not going any further, they had to stop her. And this is what they did. But I'm going to say this. She better watch her back. Because these people don't tire easily. I mean, how many stories have we heard over the years where they have found people just floating in the water and they weren't swimming? So to speak. Remember that black female judge in uh, New York that they found her floating in her body floating in the river? I forgot what kind of excuse they tried to say that she gave. I guess the usual she must have tried. She must have committed suicide, which was a load of crap. But then when you look at her backstory and her history and what she was working on as far as cases, then it all makes sense. I think it happened to a black male judge, too. Then you look through his cases and look what he was working on. Then it all makes sense. All I'm going to say is to this Denise George woman, she better be very careful. And if she has to get security, I would say do that. Um, Keep that power tool ready. Hopefully she has one or a couple because she might need it. 